Hi, everybody. Welcome. I am Aliza Ben Shalom. I am running Marriage Minded Mentor. I'm the founder of this amazing company that I love so much because our goal is to help singles get over their hurdles and under, under the football. <laughs> So we are here tonight because we are going to talk about respectful rejection. And this webinar tonight has been sponsored by JWED. And Sarah is going to tell us all about JWED and a special offer that they have for us tonight. JWED is an online dating platform. I am a little biased towards online dating platforms, because that's how I met my husband. Um, so if it's something that you thought about trying, but you're not sure, definitely, definitely, definitely consider trying it. Um, Aliza, can I make a plug for your book now? I mean, it's, <laughs> okay. I mean, I'm just talking about you, I promise. Um, but Aliza's book, is, is it official, like the name? Oh, ooh, mm -hmm. a book cover, Virtual Dating. So the book Virtual Dating is literally your guide to relationship in a socially distanced world. So if um, you are not yet on JWED and it's something you want to consider trying, but you're not sure how to go about it. Virtual dating is a great companion for that. Um, JWED is offering you guys a free week. So um, we have a code that we will send out together with the replay of this webinar. Um, I will type it right here just so you have it. It is this. Um, for the JWED, JWED code. And they have a pretty cool video feature where you can set up a video call with a person that you're interested in right from the platform. So you're not giving out your phone number. Right from your, ready. right from their phone. You're just like, click, like instead of texting them, you're like, Hey, what's up? And you yeah, but to... if you're going to do that, let them know in advance. Don't just randomly video call. <laughs> right. Them. Of course. Because <laughs> that's happened. Um, yeah. And I've had um, many clients um, dating on JWED and um, one of my clients was dating and he's like, Aliza, I don't want to date so far or such a distance. And I was like, okay, whatever. And he comes back and he's like, I met this amazing girl. And I was like, no. And he's like, well, I mean, she's like four hours away. And I was like, you said you were only dating in like a 30 minute radius. And he's like, but she's great. And I was like, yeah, but are you willing to schlep for her? And he's like, yeah. And he did. He schlepped and he dated. Uh, it went on for, you know, a little while. And thank God they are married and I see their updates. Um, they're actually a really fun couple. I love them. That's they know who they are. <laughs> yeah. um, okay. So we are going to get started tonight the way it works for anybody who is a new friend. By the way, new friend, old friend, drop it in the comments. We love to know who's here. Say hello if you're a new friend. Say hello if you're an old from, friend. Let us know where you're from. Uh, sometimes we have people watching at like 3 a.m. somewhere in Europe um, or Israel. And um, please, God, soon we'll get to doing webinars, you know, earlier in the day also, but not yet. But soon because I'm moving to Israel. Ah, please, God, in January. Really super excited. So, okay, we've got to get started. I've got my notes. Um, the the whole thing here tonight, we're all going to be talking about respectful rejection. We are going to talk about how to say no when you're not interested, when you don't want to keep dating, and when you really don't want to break somebody's heart or you just don't want to be like yelled at or somebody to like, I don't know, why don't you want to go out? I, you, know, you always say no and you're so picky and you don't want to like get all that stuff. But how do we respectfully reject either the person that we're dating or a suggestion that somebody makes to us. There might be a lot of reasons why um, we are going to be rejected. And Sara, you disappeared. Is that on purpose? Yes, I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll see you soon. Okay, so the, the first thing that I want you to think about, and maybe Sara, when she comes back, we'll read some of these things out, is how would you, if you're dating somebody, if you're going out once, even if you're going out a couple of times, how would you want somebody to say no to you? That's my first question to you. How would you want somebody to say no to you? And as you're thinking and you're typing, what I want you to know is how you would want somebody to respond to you is not exactly how you should respond to everybody. Because what you want and need might be different than what somebody else wants and need needs. And what you think is going to be comfortable to hear a no or the way to hear a no, somebody else might be like, ooh, that's way, way, way too abrasive. Um, wait, Sarah, are you typing? 
I was. Why? Oh. Okay. Sorry. I was <laughs> oh, I missed it. a question in the chat box. Oh, I saw my name and I was like, wait, do I have to say something? Okay, oh, got no, it. No, I'll change my name. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So, um, so don't assume that the way that you um, are like, don't assume that what you would want to hear from somebody that they're also going to want to hear. You really have to know who you're talking to or the type of person. Do they have thick skin or thin skin? Um, are they somebody who's prone to react, you know, seriously negatively? Do you think they could handle rejection well? Like, what do you know about this person? So um, if you have any thoughts that you want to tell us about, you know, rejection and how you would want to hear a rejection, what would be okay for you to hear? Not that anybody wants to hear no, or no thank you, or I don't like you, or you're not my personality, or I don't think we have the same outlook, or this just doesn't work for me. Whatever it is, it's a no, which by the way, I just want you to know, I've gotten a gazillion no's. <laughs> I put, I put out there a lot of things like, oh, let's do this. And maybe, you know, we'll do PR in this way or that way. And I put out a lot of things like, are you interested? Are you interested? And I got a lot of no's. And so I have not given up. I am still going to run with this, even though I got a bazillion no's and hardly any yeses. By the way, it's going to be huge. People just don't know it yet. But but I got a ton of no's and, and okay. And every time I get a no now, I'm like, ooh, if I thought that was good, something better is even coming to me. This, this was good. Good idea, Lisa. But no, sorry, not for you. Now we're going to look for something else. So your perspective on this, we have to tweak it. And I know after you hear a bunch of no's, it doesn't feel good. But to know what's wrong for you, to know what's right for you, to know who's wrong for you or who's right for you, it is helpful in the long run because it does save us time in not speaking to people for a length of time that aren't for us. So how would you want somebody to say no to you? And how should you say no to somebody when you are just not interested? And how can you do this respectfully? Um, so some people like to be direct. Okay. Sarah, you're more of a direct talker than I am, right? I'm like a little bit of a- You want to reject me? Just tell me up front and don't make up a <laughs> fake reason. Yeah. Do you want to know, like, if somebody didn't like you, would they just like, it's okay for them to say to you, like, you know, Sarah, I just, I don't like you like that. Yeah. Is that, can they just say that to you and you'll be like, yeah. okay. Right. First of all, right? it's way better than telling me like, not now. I have a lot going on in my life. It's not you. It's me. No, it's totally you. Like <laughs> them to me. Like it is me. Don't pretend it's not me. You don't like me. That's fine. That's cool. Someone else will. He does, and he married you. <laughs> yeah, he does. He kind of does. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. So um, so you would want to hear, like, I don't like you like that, or this isn't for me, or I'm not interested. Mm -hmm. um, you could also say things and be, you know, like, a little less direct. Like, you know, thanks for a nice evening. I'm not interested in continuing. Okay. It's not as direct. I don't like you, or I don't want to continue with you. It's not just in your face. It just is a little bit like more neutralized. So my question to you is what's your style? What do you prefer to say? And if you don't have a preference in what to say, then the question is, what do you think this other person would prefer to hear? And everybody you date is going to be different. This person like Sarah might like direct communication. Other people might like indirect communication. Okay. Um, how else can you do it? So you could be direct, you could be honest, but not mean. Okay. So something like, I don't enjoy being around you, right? It's like, it's mean. It's a little bit of a dig. That's not, I thought you were that's saying not, that's something you should say. And I'm like, no, no, don't, don't say right? that. Right. No. That's not direct. And that, and like, even if you don't enjoy being around them, we don't care. Um, we don't need to be honest to a point of being mean and like really digging it in. So um, what you might want to try is something like, I think you have a lot to offer, but I'm looking for something different. That's fair. Okay. So you could be direct. You could be honest, but not mean. You could be kind, but don't give mixed signals. Okay. So what I mean by that is, um, let's hear, let's talk about kind, but kind of giving mixed signals. So you're great. You have so many amazing qualities. I don't think this is going to work, but really you've got so much to offer. And, and, you know, like, I really wish it could have worked out. 
it kind of leads them to thinking that maybe you actually do want to go out with them and then you're kind of regretting saying that you don't want to go out with them and maybe they could convince you to go out with them, which is not what you're saying. So um, you could say something different. You could say, I appreciate how much effort you put into this relationship and I was hopeful that this relationship could work. However, this isn't a relationship that I want to develop further. It's not, again, a rejection is never going to, somebody's not going to walk out of that, you know, conversation and be like, yes, <laughs> if they do call me, I want to know if you get a rejection if, and somebody, you know, you reject somebody and, and they come back to you and they're like, thank you. I am so glad you said that. Now I'm going to go out there and I'm going to go find my soulmate. If that happens, call me. I, I want to meet that person. But in general, rejection is hard. And our job is to make it a respectful rejection. Something that's honest, that's direct, that's clear, that makes sense, but that doesn't really hurt somebody so deeply. Okay. What happens um, if you have been dating um, a few times, right? This isn't just in the beginning. Um, uh, no, sorry. This is uh, after a date or a few dates. So this is in the beginning. We're going to start with the beginning. You could say something like, um, I've enjoyed speaking with you, but I don't really feel a connection between us. Okay. So there is an acknowledgement of this is pleasant to be around you. I just, I'm not connecting like that. That's now, when? That's after how many dates? After a date or a few, a few dates, like the first, I never the first liked three that dates. One. I never liked that one because Right, because maybe there's going to be a Why do you think you're supposed to feel a connection after a first date? Like, that's such a Hollywood thing. I've gotten told that before, and I'm just like, mm, just say... Well, it usually yeah, means something else. What? Right. Exactly. You're, you're and then it's just like, else. but I know it means something else, so what is that something else? Like, I'm far more curious, and I want right. to know if it's something... If Is it just a me thing, and oh, well, he doesn't like it, or is it something that I should know about? You know what I mean? Right. Yes, I do know what you mean. Um, okay, so we're going to nix that one. Take it off the list. Here, we'll try. Look, we'll if, try. if it's that or don't decline, like if it's that or don't reject because you don't have the guts to reject, then do that. Right. So keep it in your notes. <laughs> okay, great. Um, Sarah's going to give me feedback on each one. We're going to decide, and you guys can weigh in in the comments <laughs> also. Like, you like this one, you don't like this one. We're going to go back and forth. Uh, something like, I'm glad I had um, the chance to get to know you, but this isn't the right match for me. Okay. Now they might ask you why it's not the right match, but you're just identifying, right? Nice. Glad that we made the, an effort, but this isn't the right match for me. And it basically is saying, I'm not willing to give you more information. If I wanted to give you more info, I would have told you specifically what it is, but I probably just don't want to tell you. Yeah. Fair, right? After a date or two or three. Yeah. After that, no. Okay. All right. So after a few dates, okay, <laughs> after a few dates, if you've been, been going out a while, what I want to do is it should be a face-to-face -face rejection and probably shouldn't be done via text or phone. Um, except, except in this Lulu virtual world of dating, virtual world of dating, um, you might need to do it by phone or video because you might not be in person so often. So we're going to make a little exception to the rule, 2020 COVID exception that um, you might not do it face to face. Um, Dan, you want a signed copy? I'll send you a signed copy. You said text, email me your text me your address. <laughs> um, okay. So sandwich the information. So something like this, I like how honest and open you are and how we've been able to connect. However, I don't want to continue. And then I like to end with the blessings. Something like, I sincerely hope that you meet somebody, you know, wonderful or something like that. So we're going to sandwich it. I like this about you. Okay. In the middle, however, even though I like this, however, but I don't want to continue. Third line, blessing. I hope that, um, I sincerely hope that, yes, Dan, soon by you. Um, a joke from a a show that we were, that I was in. Um, if anybody is uh, online on YouTube, there's a show called Soon By You and people are like, oh, Soon By You. Like, you're not for me, but Soon By You. It should happen by you. Uh, but yeah, don't tell somebody Soon By You. It's really a dig. Um, anyway, so, okay. So that's if we're going to do it face-to-face. -face. Now, what happens if 
somebody, not the person you're dating, like if you have to do a rejection, but if you have to reject the person who's making the suggestion to you, okay? So I'm shifting the rejection to, you've got lots of amazing people in your life and they care about you and they wanna see you happy. And how do you reject that person and how do you say no to that person who's making this amazing suggestion? And if you say no in the wrong way, maybe they're not going to come back to you anymore and make any more suggestions. So a few ideas. One is to say, thank you so much for thinking of me. Um, you know, but like, no, thank you. I don't think this is the right person. Um, you can say, you know, again, also thank you for thinking of me, but this isn't exactly the right fit. Um, you could say, thank you for thinking of me, but I'm looking for something different. Now they're going to want information. What is it you don't like? And if it's their looks and they're pretty little or not pretty little, put them to you, then you might not want to say to them, you know, it's their looks. Um, some people will say it. Some people will say, it's not my look. It's not my style. Some people will say, um, personality, background, certain things don't match up. Um, some people will say, I know them. I know a friend of a friend who knows them. It's just, it's not the right fit for me. You might have to give a reason if you would like somebody else to still help you going down the road. Okay. Hang on now. Okay. Here's something that I, I want to say like made up and I pulled together. So a long time ago, I read an article and it was all about, um, the power of the word because, because the because the word because gets people to do things, okay? Um, it kind of gets and gains compliance. Did I ever tell you about this thing, because, this because thing, Sarah? Did we ever talk no, about this? No, but I just read the book, The Four Tendencies. Are you familiar with oh, it? Oh, I haven't read it, so it's tell me. It's really good. And yeah. um, what you're describing is a questioner, people who need to understand why they're doing what they're doing. And so, stupid example but if you say what if i'm going out with my husband and i say what time are we going out he's going to be like why and it's not an obnoxious like why do you need to know that information he's just curious like what's the difference he'll just be like we'll leave when we leave versus if i say hey what time are we leaving so i know how much time i have to do my makeup oh 5 30. Got it. They just, they like to understand the information. So the, because when you just said that, it just like, for some it's people, they don't need that information. And for some people, like it helps them. That's how they process the world. They'll okay. also usually explain things with questions. Interesting. And these are the heart people, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So this is a little bit different. So I'll give you a different scenario with the cause yeah. and you'll, we'll compare and contrast. So in this study, this, I, maybe we'll have to include this in the email, but it's from psychology today. Um, it, it goes like this. You use the word because, because it helps people to comply, to get what you need. Okay. So if you're in, um, the, the office supply store and you need to make photocopies, you can go up to somebody and you can say, you know, excuse me, may I use the Xerox machine, right? And if they're standing there and they're using it, but you come up to ask them, they're probably gonna say like, yeah, sure, you could use it. In this example, 60% of the people, when somebody interrupted them from their Xeroxing and said, excuse me, could I use the machine? 60% said, sure, no problem. 40% didn't, okay? If you say, excuse me, I have five pages. May I use the Xerox machine? Because I have to make copies. Okay. 93% compliance. Now, wait a minute. What was the reason? That doesn't even make any sense. Obviously, if you want to use the Xerox machine, it's to make copies. Okay. So follow this. because That's this is crazy. From 60% to 93% because I need to make copies. I gave a reason. Why? I want to use the machine. Why? Because I need to make copies. Because gives a reason. Now, if you say, excuse me, I have five pages. May I use the Xerox machine? Because I'm in a rush. 94% compliance. Only 1% more. Even by giving like, because I'm in a rush. Okay. Because I need to make copies versus because I'm in what a rush. What if you do, do you have like, because I'm in a rush and I only need to make five copies? No, they didn't, they didn't do that. I bet it would study. be more though. <laughs> I bet it would be more. Okay. So may, I, I like, I'm with you on that. I'm totally, totally with you. <laughs> so 
So my brain works when I hear this information, right? Everything to me translates into dating language, right? So my brain's computing the information. I'm like, wah, 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 wah. And what I spit out is this. It goes like this. Hang on. I got my notes here. Okay. So I'm going to translate this study. And I'm not saying that this is what the study is saying. Don't, don't confuse me. I'm not saying this is what the study is saying. I'm saying now Aliza is using this tip and tool. And hi, Goldie. Um, but, but Aliza is using this tip and tool to translate it into uh, a dating speak, okay? So here, because followed by a reason is gonna help people to accept your breakup with them or your no thank you, okay? So if it's, I don't wanna continue anymore, right? If you're gonna say somebody like, you know, thank you so much, but I don't wanna continue anymore. They might put up a little bit of a fight, but if you say, I don't wanna continue anymore because I don't wanna go, go out anymore they might be more likely to just leave you alone. Now you just said the same thing twice. You didn't Wait, even give them any more information, right? Have you, hold on, have you put that into play? Like, Yeah, yeah, I'm we really... do it all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah because, because I don't wanna be bothered answering all your questions. So it's like, or, or you could say something a little stronger, like I don't wanna continue anymore because I don't feel a connection. Now, if you say that, by the way, they're gonna say, well, what do you mean? Like what kind of a connection are you looking for? You might get a lot of kickback. So the reason to give a non-reason is when you don't want to be nudged about the situation. You just want to strengthen. I said, I don't want to go out with you because I don't want to go out with you anymore. Right? Like I'm not even, it, I know it doesn't make sense, but this is how the study works and this is how the brain works. And I'm just telling you, it just works. Amazing. And then people, people might think about you like, oh, they're not so sharp, you know, but like, it's okay. We don't care. Which doesn't matter. <laughs> you want to get out of the situation respectfully or gracefully. Okay, I'm kidding when I say we don't care what somebody thinks. We we want it. We obviously want you to still look nice or good in somebody's eyes because if they have somebody else for you, we would want them to make a suggestion. But we do want you to get out of this gracefully. And so either you could be direct, but you have to be careful. We don't want to like seriously hurt somebody. Okay, so you could say, I don't want to continue because I'm looking for some something different. Or you could say, I don't want to continue because you're not my look. That's like, like, I'm not your look. Well, what do you expect that I like everything that's in the world? I don't, you know, like I also don't like the way that that tree looks. I also don't like the way that that house looks. I don't like that car. There's a lot of things that we like or don't like, but it doesn't feel good to hear that. So you might not want to strengthen your reason with something so specific and nuanced that it's painful. Um, I don't want to continue because this isn't for me. So I just said, I don't want to continue. Obviously it's not for me. That's why I, because I said, I don't want to continue, but then you're just saying, I don't want to continue because this is not for me, but it like strengthens what you say. Good. Like it. Yeah. Okay. It definitely seems uh, less dumb than the other one. <laughs> right. So it depends what direction you want to go. Um, I, I'm giving you lots of options. I like it. I all, like, them. like Keep them coming. Keep them coming. Okay. I got three more. Um, I don't want to continue because I'm looking for something different. Not someone. You could say I'm looking for someone, but you could say something different. Um, that's good, right? I love the word different. If you know me, if you heard my other webinars, I like the word different. Different isn't good and different isn't bad. Different is different. I like this and you are that. It's not the same. That's why I don't like it because it's different than what I like. It's not bad. It's just not for me. Uh, I don't want to continue because... I'm not interested in continuing dating you. <laughs> <laughs> brilliant, brilliant, Eliza. Okay. Um, or Hold you that, go if any of you try this, please give me feedback. I would like to meet the person who feels confident saying, I really enjoy the time we spend together, but I don't want to continue because I just don't want to continue. Because <laughs> I don't want to continue dating you. I said it differently. Oh, you you okay, lost okay. a few words there. Okay, hold okay, on. Okay, wait. <laughs> okay, it's fine. Go. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, here's one. I don't want to continue dating because our personalities don't match. Now, what's the problem with that? The big problem with that is when I think our personalities match and you tell me they don't, I'm going to say, but I think they do. I think you're wrong. So right. when you give a reason that somebody can refute, then you get yourself into a little bit of a bind and a conversation and a situation, which is why giving an answer just to say, I don't want to continue because I don't want to go out anymore just means that I don't want to tell you the reason and I don't want to argue with you or debate. Again, if this is in the beginning, 
you could do that. If you're into a relationship, walking away from seven dates, eight dates, two months or longer, you can't do that. It's not it like give somebody a little bit more. Say I've, I've really tried and I don't want to continue because it's just, I'm not feeling it. it. It doesn't seem right to me. I've done a lot of thinking about this. You could give a reason, but hang on to that word because and see where you can use it and how you can use it and how it can benefit you and, and just keep things kind of parve, neutral and kind of easy flowing. Okay, let me see if I got through everything and if we can move on to the Q&A section. I think we did, oh no, wait. Okay, tips, hold on. We are gonna wrap up with tips and then put all of your questions in the Q&A box and we are gonna answer them. So tips, stick to I statements if possible. I, right? Like not you're like this and you're like this and that's why this can't work, but I don't wanna continue because. Not just like you're, you're not doing it for me, this doesn't work, you're, you're messing up every time, like it's not worth it. Okay, don't give false hope, right? Like, oh, I mean, maybe we can revisit. Unless you're really unsure and you think you might revisit. But Aliza says, figure it out. Or if you can't figure it out, call a dating coach or a mentor or a friend and figure it out. Try not to end it where you're going to end it, end it. And try to end it where you, you're, when you're done, you walk away with clarity. Why are you laughing? <laughs> Did I say end it too much? <laughs> no, you just reminded me of something that has nothing to do with anything. But could I share really quickly? Share um, away. So I'm trying to remember, I had just seen a movie and I don't even remember what the movie was called, but basically we're like these two college friends made a pact that if they're not married by whatever, then they'll just marry each other. 30. 30. Julia Roberts? Maybe. And so I was dating this guy and we dated for a while and we became really good friends and you know exactly who I'm talking about. And after when, when we broke up, we, we were really good friends and we kept in touch for a while after that. Um, and I remember asking him at one point, I was like, with, in all seriousness, I was like, I have a really serious question to ask you. And he's like, what? And I'm like, if we're both single in 10 years, will you just marry me? And I thought it was so obvious that I was joking because I had just seen the movie and I know my sense of humor and he also knows my sense of humor. But like in that moment, I guess I prefaced it with like, I have a really serious question. And he was just like, that's not a fair ask. And I burst out laughing. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm kidding. And he's like, well, you said you're asking me a serious question. So I took it seriously. Thank God he got married and he actually helped me when I was dating. So. We're all good. But that's just, I don't know. You just said something that reminded me of that. Oh, taking a break. Because at the time that we broke up, we had discussed potentially like in a year, if we were both single, we would revisit it. Um, and right. that, yeah. Right. Okay, good. So if you're going to do that, don't preface it with, I have a very I'm serious question. <laughs> <laughs> you're goofball. I love you. Okay. Uh, last tip and let's open up Q&A. So avoid um, delaying this rejection. Like don't, don't keep putting it off. If you know you're going to do it, you need to do it and it needs to be done now, do it now. Like Nike, just do it. Come up with one of these ways, use something here, go online, Google, rejection, dating, come up with another 10 ways to gracefully get yourself out of a situation. But don't delay because unless you're unsure, but don't delay because it's just hard. It's hard for you. It's hard for them. And people know, and then it just gets a little funky and weird and like, Ugh. so just do it when you need to do it. And I'm going to add just because it's yeah. been a question that's come up on a number of our webinars over the last few months. Yeah. Um, if you're a really nice person and you don't want to be rude and you don't want to be mean and you're kind of waiting until they reject you so you don't reject them, that's yeah. not being nice. That's not, it's just not. If you know it's not for you and it's not going anywhere, the nice right. and considerate thing to do is to end it. Right. Right. Um, Aliza, you. you're welcome. We're being asked if we can share these lines. Can we put them in the email? Yeah, I will send you this access to this doc. Great. So yes, you will get it. All right, we have some, we actually have some really good questions. Okay, Aliza's gonna laugh now. 
<laughs> everything in the web she's always like this is such a good one i like this oh i like this one that's your line i like this question you like all the questions what's the difference <laughs> i do okay um so okay, i'm gonna start it. with this one because oh, wait, it also comes so up close. a lot yeah and it makes my can i say it makes my blood boil a little bit i don't know who sent in this question so it's not personal but isn't this the shot hun's job Okay, isn't this a matchmaker's job to reject? Well, it's not true, no. It's not true. Hang on, my friend. Take a step back. Cool the blood. Okay? <laughs> Deep breath. Mm. Okay, so the answer is maybe. That's true. Depends on, true. It depends on the circle that, that you're running. So, so just to clarify, because we have people from all different ages, stages, and backgrounds, the Shadchan is the matchmaker. Um, and the question is, is it a matchmaker's job to reject somebody for you? So the answer is, sometimes it is. Yeah, sometimes it is. Uh, sometimes it's not. It depends on how far along you are into the dating process. But if it's early enough on and you have a matchmaker that's involved, then yes, they might be the one to do this for you. But you still have to call and let the matchmaker know. And so there is still that aspect of rejection and you should maybe give a reason or something so that they understand it a little better. Yes. Um, I am not against the matchmaker being the go-between in the circles where that's the norm. However, if you are in the circles where that's the norm to start off and after the third date, um, then you own. start communicating on your own. Even if the shouting is still there and available, if you're at the point where you're communicating on your own, respect the other person enough to do it directly. That's my take. And that's what I prefer yep. for all my friends. And we come from that community. We've worked yep. with, with matchmakers at a certain point, you know, own it. Yep. Um, question next up. Mm, we answered all these because Elisa's just that good. Oh, I'm psychic. I figured yeah. out what they were going to ask before they asked it. <laughs> all right, so we got a couple matches, a uh, couple matches, a couple questions um, with regards to if you are using a matchmaker, how do you let them know that you're not interested in a match um, while still cultivating a positive relationship with them and not having them think that you're too picky? Tricky, tricky, picky, picky, question. tricky. Oh, picky, tricky. There's something in there with the webinar, my friend. Um, okay, Early? so. Make what? a note. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, it's really a good question. So you need to give enough information uh, that lets them know that you've been thoughtful and mindful about this. If somebody sends an idea to you and you instantly reject and they send another one and you instantly reject and they send another one and you instantly reject, there's not enough time for processing and thought, even if you know right away. It's not enough time for them to know that you've had time to think about it. So it might be worthwhile not to do an instant rejection with somebody because you might want to have the benefit of time passing where it shows that you've been mindful and you've been thoughtful and maybe you've done some research and therefore then you're going to reject. Um, if you are rejecting, I, I personally as a dating coach would prefer that it's not always the same thing every time. So um, a lot of times people could say, it's not my look, it's not my look, it's not my look. Okay. If it's not your look, and is everything else also perfect? Because if everything else isn't perfect also, if it's not your look and the background isn't right or something else doesn't feel right. So sometimes it's not your look and sometimes it's also that it's not a background. So I wouldn't want you to just always have your go-to answer of the same thing. It's always the same thing because it's not. It can't be that it's just one thing every time. If only for that one thing, everything would be perfect. It's not true. We're all so multifaceted that there's probably another reason that this isn't going to work. Um, so be clear and, and try to have nice communication. If you're emailing or texting, try to be kind and sweet with your words. Um, being direct is good. Being a little too direct is abrasive and, you know, people don't want to deal with abrasive people and people don't sometimes want to set up abrasive people. So work with it, massage the situation. Um, awesome. What if... A guy says yes to going out with me, um, but I wasn't interested. And a few years later, I did, I, you know, change this, change my mind, I guess, but I'm probably also a different person at this point. Um, and I do want to go out with him. How would I approach that? 
Yeah. So um, because you rejected him, you got to win him over. You got to put in a lot of effort. You got to show like, I really want to go out with you without going over the top, but <laughs> you have to be, so here's the main thinking. You rejected him. Ow. It's been a couple years. Oh, now you're still single. Oh, now you want to go out with me? I wanted to go out with you three years ago. Right. And then you're going to be like, but I want to go out with you. They might need to reject you. Right. Just like one for one. It's, it's, it's not on purpose not on purpose. It's just a brain thing. It just happens. It's like a knee jerk reaction. And so a reflex, right? It's like, phew. so they might need to do that. And then you could still come back a couple weeks later and say, no, I really, I want you to know, like, I, I know you, I rejected you. You rejected me, but like, sincerely, I'm interested. Here's why. Here's why I actually think we're going to be a good match. I don't know if we will. I don't know if it will work out or it won't. I really would like to give it a shot. Are you open to it? You might have to go back twice and that's normal if rejection has been involved. So, um, yeah, so don't think that you're going to get by easy peasy because you're not. <laughs> <laughs> Would you say it's the same for someone? We also got a question about someone who did go out um, and then and was the one to say to end it. And a few years later was interested again. Is that the same process? You did go out, you rejected, and now you want to go out again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So even more so we have to show i'm not going out with you just because there's nobody better i'm not going out with you because you're my last hope in the world and i don't think there's anybody else right i'm not going out with you because i think you'll go out with me and i guess maybe if i could get over my stuff then i'll you know consider maybe thinking about maybe wanting to go out with you maybe <laughs> and making this not go out with you but making it work and i think what we need to do is to to back it up like I want to go out with you. Let's use that because, because, and fill it in with some really sincere, genuine, real reasons. Because if you don't do that, I just think you're probably going to reject me again. And I don't want to put myself through that. It hurt enough the first time. So you, you have to put in one and a half times effort, like even more than somebody who never even got a chance to go out. All right. Um, how, sorry. Ooh, what if someone, what if you, break up with someone politely, respectfully, what do you do if they start crying or they keep you on the phone for an hour and just keep asking why? Yeah. So um, tell them to take a pause and breathe. Tell them to grab a tissue, like take a, you hear me, sensitive moment, tone the voice down, bring the energy level down. If you talk softer and deeper and slower, it calms them down, it calms down their brain, it calms down their heart, it allows them to breathe, it allows them to get into more of like this calm meditative state where they're not freaking out and everything is then why didn't you, I want to go out and I don't understand, I'm like, it's not happening and I can't believe it and how could you do that to me? I'm like, right, you hear the difference? So what we wanna do is to use our tone and our voice and our words and the pace of our speech to slow everything down, to let their brain calm down, to let their heart stop racing so that they can calm down and tell them, listen, I could stay on and I could try to answer this. I don't know if this is going to make it better or worse. I could try. And I don't want this to be any more painful than it is. And this is very hard for me too. And I'm really sorry that this isn't working. And, you know, I don't, I don't know if I can answer the questions that you have, but, you know, I could try, right? So you, other than, than that, like, what are you going to do? Rush off the phone, get, like, and then you leave somebody broken. Like, we want to leave them whole. I know, but I think at a certain point, there, there's, there is a balance. Like, if they're literally on the phone for an hour, you don't have a responsibility to, he, to, to hear them cry. Okay, so it depends on how long you've been going out. It depends on how close you've been. Right. And if it's been an hour, and if, you really like, you can't take it anymore. You could say, um, I see you need to talk more. I need to go now. And you might need, might need to schedule another time to follow up right away to end it, end it. Or you might just need to say, I'm so sorry. I need to go. And I know this is so hard and I'm, I, I just, I need to go. Right. I need yeah. to get off the phone. I, I need to get off the phone now because I need to go. <laughs> okay. Really? And then you, you just need to move it on. But you really have to gauge the situation. Like how much do you need to yeah. give in order to leave somebody as whole as possible? 
and exit gracefully out of the relationship and give the relationship like as much as you put into it when you withdraw from it we like when it's like so abrupt and abrasive it's just it's, it's like it just tears and it hurts and sometimes if you do it a little softer and more gracefully it doesn't hurt as much i also elise i've never tried this before um i'm not 100 percent sure it makes sense but i'm going to throw out an idea you tell me what you think um but i think instead of just continuing to try to answer the why because if they're still interested your why is never going to be good enough but if you say something like what information what do you need sorry not what information what do you need to hear from me so that you have the closure you need right so that makes it very clear that i'm not here to explain why but tell me but like i'm working with you so that you could have that closure and move on yes I actually really like that. I like it because it focuses directly on them and it takes you out of the picture and it's almost like it doesn't matter what I say. Exactly. What do you you need? Exactly. Which does make you look like a really fabulous person, which might make it even sadder for them to lose (laughs) you, but still, you're doing the right thing. But yeah, it it definitely, again, like you said, it puts the focus on them and it's sensitive. Okay. All right, next up. Next up. Next up. Uh, what do you do when a person's social media presence is off? It's sexual, profanity. Um, I lost it. There was something else. Extreme political views, etc. And it just doesn't seem to match the person that you're actually dating. Interesting this is maybe like their inner self that they only let out like that and then they don't verbalize it. I assume that if you stick around with them long enough that you are going to see that come out in their personality. Um, If you're seeing it online and they're writing it, then unless somebody hacked their account, it's who they are. This is, this is them coming out in the real, in the flesh. And I would talk to them about it and I would say, wow, you know, I was, you seem so, calm, gentle, demure, kind, sweet, all these things. And online, you seem to be so vulgar and just, mm, what is that side of you? Tell me more about it. You know, like, look into it and just say, they don't seem to match. Is that like, tell me about yourself. Golda says they need online overhaul. They do. And it's in Daters Academy. And if you <laughs> check out Daters Academy on marriagemindadventure.com, you will see that we have a five-part program, which is amazing. And that program guides you through five different things. One of them is online overhaul, which really helps you to check out your online self and Google yourself and figure out what you want to clean up so that the best part, not that you're hiding anything, but that the best parts of you come out and that all of you that you want somebody to know about is there. And all of you that you don't want to be super, super public about is not because sometimes we forget how much is public. All right. We touched on this, um, but I'm going to ask it anyway. How do I develop the guts to reject someone? I'm a friendly person and I don't want to come off as someone rude at the end of the day. Right. So come off sweet. It has to be I like sweet. I had a really lovely time and I'm so glad I got a chance to know you and this doesn't work for me. And I'm, you know, I just, you can even say, you know, I'm so uncomfortable to even say this because this is hard for me but I yeah. don't want to go out anymore. I'm, I'm okay. I love being real. Like I, I don't want to tell you this because I don't, because this doesn't make me feel good and it won't make you feel good, but I don't want to continue anymore. I think, I think, um, I totally forgot what I was going to say. Oh yeah. I think it's really helpful to remember, like when you think about, oh, I don't want to hurt them. Oh, I don't want to be rude. Just think about what the other option is. Either I say something now and I can say it in a way that's respectful or it's going to happen eventually. And how much more is it going to hurt and how much more rude is it going to be when they realize that this is how you were feeling all along? And even if they don't realize it, like, come on. Um, So I think that that's helpful just to keep in mind for in the moment to like gather up the guts. And then also, I don't know, I feel like this is a very Elisa thing to say, but practice. Yes. 
That's totally me. And practice with your friends. Get a friend on the phone and be like, be really nice to me and tell me how much you like me and then let me reject you and see if I can actually do it. Totally an Aliza thing. I do. I practice a lot of things. Like I think and rehearse in my head. You know, those people that like rehearse lines in their head of like what they're going to say and how they're going to say it. And then when they go to say it, you're, you're one of them? Oh my God. So I'm one of them. I'm like thinking about what it is or how it is or, oh, it sounds like this. Or sometimes I will. I'll say it out loud. I'll be like, Oh, that doesn't sound right. Like even when Sarah and I are even coming up with like webinar topics and subtitles and, and we like, we're like, let's come on. We're having a brainstorming session, which basically means we're going to say it wrong, like 47 times. And then we're going to be like, Oh, respectful rejection. Yes, that's it. Right. All the other ideas were lousy. That never came out right. But when you practice something, then it finally comes out right. And you're like, okay, I could say that. And then after you say it over and over again, your mouth gets used to it. Your body gets used to it. You can calm down when you know what's so funny at the beginning when we started doing this I remember like definitely more than I do now I used to throw out and be like oh no that's awful or this won't work but blah 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 or no and at this point we just like throw out words until someone goes ooh that um and I think I think it is it's just practice like it'll if it's something that you struggle with it's totally worth taking the time to practice. It'll feel weird, but hey, you're not going to hurt anyone. Um, right. And and then and you will help yourself. Easier, yeah, in that moment. Yeah. Um, uh, so someone said, in America, saying a sincere no thanks is absolutely polite and respectful. Not so much, not so in other countries, especially Asian. Um, so I'm not sure exactly what you're referring yeah, to. But I don't no, mean that's that no, 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 that's I know, no. I know, I know. I know. Hold on. Let and me wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> no, I'm interrupting you. And in Israel, you know, like they're like, no, the lobby shvili. It's not for me. Yeah. You know, like, you know, yeah. Nothing. Um, you know, like they they throw a no out there, and you're like, oh, you know, and they just you know that's about it. so interesting because it took me a long time. Okay, this is not about me. Okay, next. Um. <laughs> What I wanted to say is, yes, that is correct. We're primarily talking about Americans with Americans or Americans with Canadians, et cetera. But as soon as you go, just no, know that as soon as you mix cultures, cultures, as soon as you mix cultures, it's going to be different. Like it used to drive me nuts when um, my husband wouldn't like say please before making a request. And then I realized the tone is how you make the request. Like I was literally studying Hebrew and like, you can, you can say please, but usually it just outs you as an American because the the politeness is in how you phrase the question with your tone and intonation versus the word itself. Um, right. So yeah, if you're, so gonna if you're dating somebody an, from... If you're going to break up with an Asian, then definitely, uh, I don't know. Sweet, sweet and soft. Before you break up with them. Sweet, <laughs> sweet, 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 sweet and soft. Sweet and soft. Someone says it's New York too. What's New York? <laughs> Not saying please? No, that's just rude. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Don't buy it. All right, next question. Um, She's Canadian, ladies and gents. No, I look, I also like, we're, we're also into pleases. Yeah. We'll have to get used to that when we go to Israel. <laughs> yeah. Um, how does one, uh, how do you properly end things with someone who has a mental illness without hurting him or her? Okay, really good question. Um, you should know often people who have mental illnesses want to be treated respectfully as well. And so, again, know their ability to handle something, be prepared to have whatever type of a conversation that they need to have, and also know you might need to give double, triple, or quadruple the amount of time for processing the information and to move through it. So you might be able to like, no, move on and next, and they really need a long time. Have a sensitivity and awareness to that and let it draw out a little bit longer so that they can have processing time. I also just want to say like, mental illness is a very 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 broad term um yes. so like know what you're dealing with before not everything needs as much as you think it needs and some things need more than you think it needs so just and, know and make sure if it's something more severe that they are near to home or family or somebody so that they can have comfort and other things when when this is over and like have great support and also try not 
by the way, ooh, didn't mention this yet. Try not to do rejection kind of late at night in the bewitching hour. Like give people daytime and time to process when there's other people around, there's other distractions and they're just not all alone with their thinking. That's a good point. What if the person is possessive or has narcissistic tendencies and has no sense of boundaries? Then you need to say no, no thank you, and to move on as quickly and gracefully as possible, but not to draw the conversation out. You won't get anywhere. That's also like a really good time. That's where blocking someone's number does work. Absolutely, 100%. Um, all right. What if you're talking to someone, but you haven't met yet, you get along via calls and FaceTime, but you don't feel any chemistry, how do you express that to the person? I enjoy talking to them and would definitely want to continue being friends, but not in a romantic capacity. Well, you haven't met yet, so you don't know if it's a romantic capacity. I'm going to like, you know, say like, we have a great time and like, oh, but I'm not interested romantically, but you didn't meet them in person. So unless you're a hundred percent sure, for sure, for sure, this is not for you for whatever reason. And there's a real reason from the way it's phrased. There's not a real reason there yet. Uh, I would rather you meet if you are definitely not going to be meeting that I'd rather you phrase it and say, I don't think that we have the ability to meet now for whatever reason. Um, so I don't want to continue this in a romantic direction. I don't mind. If you don't mind to stay friends, I don't mind to stay friends. It's not my recommendation. That was yours from the questioner. But I would recommend unless you're going to meet in person, then there's no reason to talk and continue. Awesome. All right. Um, this is not specifically relevant, but I'm asking anyway. Do you recommend trying to set up people with people that you've broken up with? Or does it cross boundaries because it can get awkward? I just want to say, I'm not sure the because has to do, like, does it, I think the question is, does it cross boundaries and it can get awkward? I don't think it crosses boundaries because it gets awkward. It crosses boundaries and it's awkward and you should do it if you have a good idea for sure, figure out how to do it, even though you rejected them. The fact that you think highly enough of them to set them up with somebody, um, they, you should take a suggestion seriously from another single that's been yeah. on the date with you because they've experienced you. And if they know the yes. other person, they've experienced them and they have the potential to be a great matchmaker because they know both of you. So I would take it seriously. Now they could be off. It might not work. But I always take those suggestions very seriously when I talk with my clients. We've definitely spoken about this. I've set up, I've definitely made suggestions and set up people that I've, guys that I've gone out with. Um, if you haven't spoken directly with each other, like if you had a matchmaker um, coordinating, or if you feel like based on whatever reason you broke up, broke up, he wouldn't be open to listening to you or you wouldn't take it seriously, you could also just ask someone else to suggest it. It doesn't yeah. have to come from you. You can make the suggestion through someone else, whichever feels more appropriate given the circumstances. Exactly. Awesome. All right. Next up, um, <laughs> how to be confident that you're not passing up your match. Oh, yeah. So we go through this, like I feel like every webinar. <laughs> okay. It goes like this. But it's relevant. You repeat after me. A yes is a yes. A yes is a yes. A no is a no. A no is a no. And anything else is a yes for now. That just means you're going out. So if you're not sure if you're going to mess up and you're missing your match, you know, date them till you hate them or when in doubt, go out, but do not break up. If you're not sure, get a mentor, get a friend, get a coach, figure something out, but keep going out. We don't want you to miss them. And if you do miss them, then you got to go back and redate them. And like, man, we could always already solve it now. So the way not to mess up is to say yes to another date and give it a shot until you can't take it any longer or until you want a ring on your finger or want to put a ring on a finger. Great. I like that. Um, so then the answer to when is the appropriate time to break up with someone would be when you know for sure, right? Yeah. When you're clear, when you're clear, this isn't and for me. And what? And not late at night. Yes, don't do it late at night. This is an interesting question. Are there questions you should ask before ending a relationship? 
Hmm. So that makes me think that you don't necessarily want to end it and you don't have the confidence and you're not really sure. Yeah. There's lots of questions you should ask before the end of the relationship, but it depends on the relationship. Like, what are you questioning and what are you thinking and what are you concerned about? So if you tell me, I don't know if our values are really in line, then I want you to ask question, questions based on your values and figure out where they're similar and where they're different. And that's what I would ask. Like, where do you think we're similar and different? Or, um, you know, how do, how do we match up long-term and short-term goals, right? We want to kind of explore your points of connection and disconnection so that we can learn what works and what doesn't work and if it's worth pursuing or if it's worth passing on. All right. Awesome. Um, so this is coming at the question from the perspective of the person being broken up with. How do you get the other person to tell you information about why they said no so you can improve and do better next time? Yeah. This question we get a lot. What happens if you don't need to improve or do better? Maybe you do. So we could take it from your point of view and then we'll take it from my point of view. Mm -hmm. If you are rude or inconsiderate or not thoughtful or showing up late all the time or not treating somebody respectfully, if there's something going on and you need to improve it, yeah, somebody should t give you some feedback so that you could improve on that. What if you're just not their person? What if there's nothing inherently that's wrong with you and there's nothing that you need to fix? It just isn't a match because you're different, my favorite word because you're different, then you don't actually have to change anything. So when you go digging and you're like, but tell me, tell me something, what could I do better next time? What could I, like, I don't have any information for you. I don't think there's anything wrong for you. I just don't think it's a match for me. So it puts people in an uncomfortable and an awkward position and there's not necessarily a clear answer. So I have a hard time agreeing that that's something to go digging for. Um, I would have a lot of confidence in knowing that you're somebody who's fabulous and has your act together and you'll improve what you need to improve. You're a work in progress like all of us, but this just wasn't a match. Rejection always hurts. So, and it, I think the more that it happens, the more, the easier it is to doubt yourself and question yourself. So for one more time, for everyone in the back and everyone in the front, Lisa, could you just say that again? I'm not even kidding. I'm really not the, kidding. The whole thing? You know, the, the main line. Which? <laughs> this is like, I don't know what I just said. Remind me. The point is, <laughs> you I mean, don't, like just that. because someone doesn't want to go out with you doesn't mean that there's something that needs to be fixed. It doesn't mean that you're broken. Right? Right. right. And I expect, expect 90% of the people that you date to be pretty wrong for you. And I expect another 8% of the people for you to be dating to be like, not really right for you. And I expect 2% of the people for you to be dating to, for you to actually be interested in and for it to potentially work. So I would expect a lot of rejection in the dating process, unless you're lucky and the first person that you meet is the first person that you marry. Other than that, if you're dating, it's all about rejection. Dating is rejection, rejection, rejection until forever, until it's not forever, until I meet that person and then it happens. But rejection is just normal and dating. I know we've said this a hundred times. So I'm going to say it one more time. So make it 101 because this is literally what kept me sane throughout my dating. Aliza yeah. always used to remind me 99% of the time you're going to fail because you're only mm -hmm. looking for one. So until that one happens, you're just going to have to keep failing. That's part of the process. And you're going to have to keep rejecting or being rejected. And it's just normal. So once we normalize rejection, like it's not this big, horrible, awful thing in the world, like that nobody wants to do a whole media presence show on my amazing, fabulous book, like rejection, right? <laughs> Would you like to see my rejection letters? I got them, they're fabulous. And I look at them and I'm like, okay, you're 99%. I'm looking for my 1%. You're not it. You're out of luck because this is going to be great. You know, so I'm like, okay, the person you marry, it's going to be great gonna be amazing but 99% right. of the time it's gonna be lousy. Well these are you're gonna like this one. Guys always. Always, guys always <laughs> tell me that I have a wonderful personality and they want to stay friends with me while they are rejecting me. Is that healthy to do? I also feel bad because I feel they just aren't physically attracted to me otherwise they would totally want to continue dating me. So it's probably a fair assessment. Um, 
if it, if your personality is great and then the attraction isn't there, then again, nothing wrong with you. You're probably adorable, but it's just not their look, their style. They have a different right. look. I, I did this with somebody. I mean, I've done this with a lot of somebody's, but somebody I have in mind particular, in particular, and I, we like had pictures and we we're just flipping through them. Like what works for you? Tell me what works for you. And everybody was to me objectively beautiful. Put them in front of a hundred people. You get a, yeah, of course, of course, of course. Like this, not my look, not my look, not my look. I'm like, every one of them is great. And he goes, yeah, not my look, not my look, not my look. I was like, what's your look? I don't even, I, there's nothing, there's nothing that's your look. I don't see anything that's appropriate for you. So uh, if people are Wait, asking- what was his look? <laughs> You're missing the important part here. I, I'm telling you, I don't know. He might still be single. <laughs> I can't even figure it out. It didn't make any sense to me. You have to be able to translate. You have to put words to it. You have to, and, and I always tell people, don't be shy. I just tell me what you like. It makes no difference to me. And every, everybody thinks somebody's beautiful. Right. So I would highly recommend that you do not be friends with them. No, thank you. You're not my husband. I need to go find him. I don't need somebody else to fill up my time and my space. I need my husband. You're not him. Thank you. Had a nice time. Adios. Sayonara. See you later. Thank you for, um, you know, the opportunity to see if this would work. It didn't work. Move on. But I wouldn't keep a whole bunch of friends. When you fill up your life with friends of the opposite sex that are there and they're just in your face all the time, this, then you don't have any space in your life for somebody else. And then you piece together all the best parts of everybody and you feel very fulfilled and very satisfied. And then there's no room for that other human being to come in your life to fulfill and satisfy you because those needs are already being met somewhere else. That's so interesting. Oh, yeah. Did you never hear me say that one? That's a good one. Um, not that specific point. Ooh, yeah. I haven't said that in a while. Yeah, I've never heard you say that because I am, I'm kind of, I was about, I was like, should I I know, I know, it? you're good. Yeah, should you're, I you're ask? Because if I ask, then at least after the weapon hurts, can be like, yeah, you shouldn't have asked that. You put me on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> but since you said what you said, now I can say it. Like, I was going to ask. I, I do think, the same way I have girlfriends, like, why can't I have guy friends, but what you're saying makes sense, that I'm filling that need in many different ways for many different people, so I, like, put on the back burner finding that there's less, there's less intensity in terms of dating if I'm dating for marriage, so that makes sense. Okay, you have a point, Aliza, you have a point. Thanks, Sarah, for patting me on the back, that was good. <laughs> um, someone asked, follow-up question. Yeah. Uh, isn't it abusive to demand to know the reason for the no? You can always ask if you're okay with refusal to answer, right? You can always ask if you're okay with refusal to answer. Right, so I'm okay with people asking because people are curious. They want to know. Anybody who's a thinker, lots of my clients are thinkers. They got lots going on there. They want to know. We're curious. It, would, it just helps us with our processing. So I think it's okay to ask. If you're talking about demanding, like, you know, you're not getting out of this car and we're not ending this conversation until you tell me what's wrong. It's not really appropriate. You might want to say, you know, that type of behavior is one of those things that doesn't work for me, among others. <laughs> it's just, you know, hint, hint. Um, so I, I think it's okay that people ask. It's um, uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable. It's not easy, but I don't think it's inappropriate. I think we're curious and we want to learn and we want to grow and uh, we want to know. And, and there might be a reason why something doesn't work and somebody does need a little bit of information and you need to tell them, you know, I don't want to go out anymore and I am a little uncomfortable. Some of the things that you've said or done have made me feel uncomfortable and here's why I don't want to continue. And even just to let you know, even if those things were fixed or different or whatever, like it's a part of, you know, your personality and it doesn't feel good for me. And so I'm not, I'm not interested to um, continue and that's okay. And it might not be for them. Other people have thicker skin. It might be okay for them or they might have different, you know, sensitivities and they may not, might not be bothered by something you said. Awesome. Next up, at what point do you think friends should be there to mentor slash friends to navigate the relationship and schmooze it up with their friends? That was a little repetitive. And at what point would you recommend they get legit professional help? Okay, sorry, I will rephrase that. At what point do you think that friends should 
chat about dating with friends. I hope I got this right. If I didn't, let me know. Versus at what point should someone get professional help? And how do you recommend telling someone to get help? I'm assuming we're talking about navigating a relationship. Right. So I don't know your friends. I don't know how good they are at navigating relationships and if they've been a good source of advice for you. If you've always gone to your friends and they seem to always give you great advice and you really value what they say and it's helped you, then I think you could stick with good advice. If you are floundering and a little bit back and forth and they're a little bit wishy-washy and they're confusing you more than they're helping you clarify, then I would say you should look for some professional support. If you're asking the question, you probably are looking for support. Most people who don't ask the question, it doesn't even come to their mind to get or want or need that, but it sounds like you probably should seek that out. I'm not sure if they're asking for themselves or... No, oh, to tell the other person, right, <laughs> yeah. right, right. So you could tell a friend at a certain point, look, I'm a friend and I want to give you this advice as a friend, but I think a professional might be able to help you in a different way than I'm helping. Different, you like that word? Okay, not a better way, just a different way. And I would love for you to get some outside guidance as well. Awesome. I like that. Objective, right? Objective third party, you know, come up with some good words, some good lingo. All right, next question. How many phone conversations can you have before deciding to say no? Could you I mean, or should you, I guess? No. Yeah, it could be one. Could be not such a great call that first time. <laughs> uh, could be, right. It doesn't make a difference to me whether it's phone, in person, anything. At the point that you know it's a no, it's a no. If you're not sure if it's a no, then it's a yes for now and you should try it again. If you're still questioning, learn more information. Just gain clarity. The way to gain clarity is to date them. Tell you hate them. Or marry them. Or the head. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is a good one. Um, obviously, you don't want to base your decision on the other person's decision, but sometimes if they want to continue, can I change my mind? Can I change my mind? Meaning? About continuing? You you were trying to reject them. They say, I want to continue. And then you can say, I want to continue. Is that what that meant? Let's go with that. Might be. I don't know. I, I just assume like, yeah, I just assume in dating in general, but yes, yes, yes. That. Okay. Basic, basically it goes like this. If you try to reject somebody and they could talk you back into going out with them, then you weren't really so attached to your rejection or you're a wimp. But I don't think you're a wimp. I think you're not super attached to your rejection. And then you should probably go out again. And I do this with clients as well. I'm like, do me a favor. You want, this is how I save clients from making mistakes. You're going out, you're going out. Basically, you're not going to break up until you call me and you break up with me. Then you could break up with them, but don't do it until you could convince me that you've got a really good reason why. If I could talk you out of it and you're not really so clear about your rejection and it's not really a hard no, then we're not ending this. We're only ending this when this is actually a no. So if somebody's able to really not sweet talk you into it, but smart talk you into something to say, but we should give this more of an opportunity and here's why. And I hear your concerns and we'll keep an eye on those, but I think we should try a little longer. And you're like, wow, yeah, okay, right? Now you still might go home and be like, what did I do? I tried to dump them and I got talked into going, like I got roped back into this. I don't know. But if they're able to present some good points and information, you should just continue to go out and clarify. It's worth it. 100%. And I'm just going to add, if one of the things that you don't like about them is that they're, char they're a charmer and they sweet talk the way back to anything and you feel like they're manipulative, then you got you to gotta just stand your ground. <laughs> Don't let that happen. Awesome point. <laughs> all right. I think we actually got to all of the questions. Awesome. Yeah. Any last? Oh, oh, oh. We got two more that came in. Sorry. Uh, why is it that someone who breaks up with another person suddenly wants to be friends? What planet am I on? Um, you mean they want to be friends, like, not suddenly, just like, like I don't they think broke it's suddenly. I think they liked you all along. They just didn't necessarily like you romantically and didn't see a potential I like, future. I like you like a friend or like a, you know, yeah. like a, a buddy, but I'm not interested in you. Um, some people say it just to be polite. Other people actually mean it. Like, no, I really would like to hang out with you. I just yeah. don't want to date you. 
Yeah. But if you like them, you can't be friends with them. I'm sorry. You got to go back and read. Right. Hold on. Wait. Right. Get your first book. Get Real, Get Married. You got to read Get Real, Get Married, which is on Amazon. And you've got to check out chapter... Uh, chapter 29, page 97. Men and women can't be friends. They can't. Somebody's always interested. Either you're interested in them or they're interested in you, but there's no way that you can be friends. Sarah is laughing, but it's I'm not laughing. I love hearing your opinion on this. If you <laughs> don't like them and you're like, no, but we're just friends. <laughs> that's how it works it's how it works or maybe you deep down like them and you just don't know it yet and you're gonna marry them and call me in five years so this person really <laughs> doesn't like it and says I find it obnoxious um I'm gonna say it's obnoxious when people say it just to be polite like when they're really trying to reject you and they're let's just be friends is their polite way of saying of when they think that that's being nice Right. Um, when it said sincerely, and I know Lisa doesn't like this, but say it, it Sarah. Said, sometimes it's said sincerely, and I don't. I'm not sure why that would be obnoxious. No, it's not. When it's said sincerely, it's not obnoxious, but still, you're going to be interested if they're the one that. No, broke that up I you. understand. That I understand. I was just addressing the comment. Yeah, I don't obnoxious. Yeah. All right, this is, uh, we'll finish up with this last question because it always comes up whenever we talk about this and I know Lisa's is gonna like answering it. What if I'm scared to lead the person on if- I um, love this question. I know. I don't wanna lead them on. I'm not sure, I'm pretty sure I don't like them. I'm pretty sure I wanna break up, but I don't know if I wanna break up. Yeah, I love this question. I know. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, the deal is this, this is how you date. Dating is the process of figuring out if it's I like you, I wanna marry you, or if it's I like you and I don't wanna marry you. So in order to figure that out, you've got to go out. You've gotta go out. You cannot figure it out by thinking about it. You cannot figure it out by talking about it. You cannot figuring it out by processing and just taking time. Go out. The more you see them, the more you know them, the more you understand them, the more clarity you'll have. And either you'll inch towards being like, oh, I do kind of like them. Oh, I do like that. Yeah, I mean, I guess that does work. I mean, that bothers me, but not so much. And like, eventually you're like, yeah, it works. <laughs> or you're like, gosh, I don't like that. Saw that twice. Mm, look at that other thing. Ooh, that's like three things that really bother me. Ooh, you know what? That one zinger every time. Why does he, she do that? Ugh. Oh gosh, do I have to go out again? I really, like, I really, I don't mean, I don't think, I mean, forget it, I'm done, okay? And that's the process. How do you get through that process? Date, 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 like chapsticks, do, 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 right? Do, 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 until you get out to the, you're gonna get out to one end or the other. I don't know which end you're going to, but you're going in one direction. And if you keep dating, you're gonna figure that out. So please, when in doubt, go out. Please date them till you hate them or until you marry them. We need something better. Hate them or I need something on the other side that rhymes and goes better with that whole flow thing. Because it's not only date them till you hate them. It might be date them till you love them. But that doesn't rhyme. But you'll have to be okay with that for this time. So, um, so that's the process. All right. Thank you. So we did get two more questions that came in and I have time for them. So I'm going to ask those two. Um, Guy keeps putting me on hold. Oh, oh, wait, sorry. Date him till you hate him or date him till you made him. Golda, you're on. Spot on. Okay, great. <laughs> Cute. I just okay, have ahead. one question. Aliza, how have you not come up with that earlier? How? <laughs> how? That's a good one. <laughs> it's really good. <laughs> Sold, Golda. Well done. <laughs> All right. Guy keeps putting me on hold and scared of commitment. I really like him a lot. I don't know why we keep going back and forth. We've ended it before, but there's something there. I feel like we keep taking one step forward and five steps back. Any advice? Yeah, I think you need help at this point. Like you need professional help to figure out how to just, we got to jumpstart this and what I call chutzpah dick mastermind and brainstorm what's going on on the other side and 
just, we got it. We got to move through this. Sometimes people get tripped up and if you don't know how to process and handle the situation and help navigate somebody along, um, it's not going to move. And you're going to, you're in this gridlock of like, go, stop, go, stop, go, go, go again, stop, go. And we don't want that to happen. Otherwise you'll burn out. So yes. The good news is I know someone you could talk to. <laughs> She's really good at this stuff. Just saying. <laughs> and she so does cute. she does calls with singles and with couples. Wait, no, you only do the packages now. But do your other coaches also do couple calls if that's something that he would be open to? Uh yes. There you go. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you um, can call us for a 15 minute intro call and uh, see if this is something that you need. This just sounds more involved. And once we're already at this stage, this is not just like, you know, a two step, figure it out and do something. Right. This needs, you know, we got to massage the situation. Yeah. All right. So someone's asking, how in the world do we date during COVID? And the good news is we've done so many webinars on that and there's so much awesome information. Um, go check out the webinars page on the Marriage Minded Mentor website. Yeah, there's now like two pages or three pages of webinars. So make sure to click go to page two or go to page three so that you can see them all. Yeah, but ways to date, the art of virtual flirting. Um, help me out. What other? Yeah, virtual? no, there was even very early on, we had how to date during COVID. And um, there's a bunch of them, and, and they all have descriptions. So look at the descriptions in addition to the title um, on the flyer. And there's there's a lot, there's a lot of content there. And we are gonna finish out with this last question that is very timely. Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur are coming up soon. Let's say the person that you rejected was hurt after you rejected them or by your rejection. Are you supposed to ask for forgiveness? Oh, this is a little tricky. It's a little tricky. Uh, maybe. <laughs> so if you really did something wrong, like you just dumped them and you were nasty and you were mean or you were just not good about it, then you're apologizing because you did something wrong. If you broke up with somebody and somebody got felt hurt or is upset about it, but you did everything right, you were respectful, you did everything you were supposed to be doing, then they got hurt because that's the process of breaking up. So that's the first nuance. The second thing is, if you broke up with them and they got hurt and they got over it, and now you're going to go back and apologize, now you're going to open an old wound, now you're going to hurt them again. So we don't need to be hurting them twice. Um, the short answer is I can't give you an answer because I don't know your specific situation. And I would tell you to ask your local rabbi um, or, or local Jewish mentor and guide and find somebody who you could share the specific details of this situation so that you could get clarity. Um, sometimes people will send a text or will send a, a something else to say, this is you know, what I'm thinking about and here's what I wanted to share and I wanted to ask for forgiveness. Um, making a phone call and having a phone conversation and catching somebody by surprise, like, oh, what, who is it? Yeah. Oh, what? You, like, you might not want to do that. And my question to you is, are you doing this for them or are you doing this for you? I, Sarah's like, I was going to say that. I, I know. Was, I was going to say <laughs> something else, but yes. Okay. But who, who are you doing this for? Is it really for them? Did you wrong them? If you didn't, breaking up with somebody is not wronging them. Right. Okay. Telling them, look, I think you're nasty and you're mean and you're a horrible person. And I don't want to date you anymore. Now you owe them an apology. Yep. You do, okay? But saying, I don't want to go out anymore. This isn't for me. And them going like, <laughs> and they're hurt by that. That doesn't deserve or need an apology. And we don't need to open that wound again. And Sarah, you have something Yeah, to say. someone someone just um, pointed out in the chat. I wasn't here last week, but someone said it was discussed last week. And he, who's he again? Uh, uh, Rabbi Jack. Jack, Jack, Jack yeah. um, Rabbi said Jack. to send an email when necessary. Um, and one other thing I was going to add, kind of like I said before, just because I've seen, thank God I haven't been in that situation, but I've been on the sidelines and sometimes in the middle of other friend situations. And I think just be very aware of what you're saying. If you are sending an email or a text message or something, what is it that you're saying? Because I'm sorry I broke up with you. No, you're not. I'm sorry I hurt you when we broke up. You didn't hurt them. They were broken. They were hurt 
by the situation, um, unless you did hurt them, in which case you hurt them. Um, but I still think I, I'm still going to go back to what I said before. I like the closure thing. Like, I know you were hurt when I broke up with you. Is there anything that I can say to give you the closure? Like, if you need to ask for forgiveness, do it within that context, right? I would like to ask forgiveness and is there anything I can say to provide you with the closure? Because usually when people are hurt and they can't move past that, there's something, there, there is something where they don't have closure to move on, right? And sometimes yeah. it's something they feel like they need from you. So. Yes. yes. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, Sarah, you're going to... Um, thank our, well, we're going to thank our sponsors again, and you're going to put, no, I went, you're going to put the code there. I wanted, I want to make sure that people have it. So code. we have a tremendous thank you to our sponsor, JWED, for this webinar. And you can not only date somebody online on their app and the website, but you can go on your phone as you open that app, you can click, you can schmooze with somebody. And right there, you can click and be like, hey, we can have a video call. You want to chat right now? And you can see somebody face to face. And this new thing came out online for them um, right as COVID was hitting and it was such a blessing because it made getting in touch with somebody and seeing them not exactly but ish face to face the best that we can virtually um, a reality and it's a true blessing so if you um, have not yet signed up or checked out JWED you're like what is JWED.com what are you talking about what's the JWED app look up JWED, check them out. You can find lots of singles on there um, of all ages and all stages and all backgrounds. And um, you can stick your profile up there and we have a code for you, which Sarah is putting in the chat. And we will also have in the email for anybody that um, signs up after the webinar that you will get that code and you can get a free week to give it a test run and see like, ooh, do I like this? And it's the perfect time. We're coming up on the new year and it's a new year. It's going to be a new you and you're going to meet your new somebody. God, well, I, yay. I would love to say thank you to everybody for coming. And I also want to tell you that if you do have specific questions and you're like, oh, I love this stuff. I want more of this. So if you want any more of this content, you can always find us on marriagemindedmentor.com. And all of our webinars are there and all of our programs, tons of articles and free information. If you're like, Aliza, I do want to do coaching, but I can't afford it. You know, COVID, there's stuff going on. We've got free, free, free content for you. If you are thinking I'm dating, it is not going my way. I've got a little bit of extra funds and I really want to put it into figuring this whole thing out and doing it a little bit differently. I love that word this year. And you're like, I want to work with a coach. Sign up for a 15 minute intro session. I would tell you, you could sign up with any one of the coaches. If you're like, I don't know who to work with, sign up with me and I'll tell you who would be a great coach and a great fit for you. Um, we have two ways of working with us. One is what we call get over your hurdles. And it's what I call our a la carte option which means you can sign up with any coach and um, the fees range between 75 to 150 per session. The sessions are 45 minutes long and you can work with anybody that you want. Um, you can work with them as much or as little as you need one time or 10 times or 50 times or however many you need. Um, we are here for you. If you're thinking, yeah, but I need more support than that, Aliza. Like I want like the full package. Then you're going to want the under the hurdles package. It is a three month package where you sign up um, to work with our team. You get our support. Um, you can check out all of the information online. Um, and that's um, a larger package and a larger investment. You could sign up with me to learn more about that. And am I leaving anything else off? Oh, if you're like, I just want to do this myself, like give me some DIY information, check out our programs. Our online programs are phenomenal. I could tell you they're amazing. And Sarah and I work together um, doing, I did like brain dumps and crafting and creating information. And Sarah was like a wizard and making my brain look beautiful on paper and editing videos and pulling the content together. And so we have two amazing programs for singles. One is called Daters Academy and the other one is called Dating Detox. And you should check them out. There's lots of, lots of ways to be involved and to get the information and the support that you need. And we hope that you find somebody wonderful this year, that it results in an amazing, beautiful relationship, and that you share the good news with us because we want to know, we want to celebrate with you. So please share. Can I, can I just sign off with something that Stan said that I really like he put in the yes. chat box? I learned yes, two important words today. 
because and different. And I think that sums up the webinar so beautifully. And if that's what you remember, if that's your golden nugget, you got everything. <laughs> it's true. It's true. And those are, those really are the two key takeaways, Stan. Well done. <laughs> All right, so thank you so much to everybody for joining us and we will see you next week. We have a webinar every Thursday or almost every Thursday, you know, like except when Sarah gets married and Rosh Hashanah. But you know, like other than that, we have webinars on Thursdays at eight o'clock. All right, we will see you All guys right. next week. Uh, no, unless you go get married, would you? I don't need to see you next or week. Or next week. <laughs> you do that, let us know. Do we want to know? We want to know. Of course. Well, you should be dating. You should be dating seriously. All right. All the best. Bye, everybody. Bye.